In this quick tip, we're going to build this page with a sidebar using the new responsive controls. These new responsive controls can be used to lay out more complex designs that weren't previously possible. We'll use the new responsive container layouts to define the main components of this sidebar design. In doing so, we utilize the container layouts for more than just how the page responds. Now when we design in Bubble, we must be intentional with how we place container elements. Here we have a sidebar that takes up either side of the screen, and a content area that stacks elements vertically, like a nav bar and the page content. If you want the sidebar to take up the entire page, we would make the page container layout a row. If you wanted to have a nav on top of your sidebar, you would make the page container layout a column with a group on the page that has a container layout of row. The choice is entirely yours depending on your app. For this example, our nav bar will go in our content area instead, so we'll use our page container layout as a row. We'll add two groups to our page. Since in a row elements align horizontally, they will show up next to each other like so. This first group on our left will become our sidebar, and the other one will be our main content area for our app. I'll go ahead and give these two groups background colors so we can clearly see them as they respond. Selecting our sidebar group, we'll set a container layout of align to parent, anticipating how we want our sidebar design to look. Next, we'll set the width in the property editor. You can make this width fixed, but for more flexibility, we can uncheck fixed and set the min and max width. We'll set the min width to 15% of the parent container, which in this case means 15% of the page, and we'll check fit width to content to shrink the sidebar to the width of the widest child element. Since we currently have nothing in it, it'll shrink to the min width. To complete our sidebar, we'll set the vertical alignment to stretch. This will fill the height of the page even as the height grows. For our main content group, we will give it a container layout of column, so child elements we place inside will stack vertically. Next, we will uncheck fixed width, so the max width is infinite to the rest of the page, and set its vertical alignment to stretch so it uses its max height. And we're done. We have the foundation of a sidebar layout. Our sidebar has a container layout of aligned to parent. So for our app, I'll add two groups, one pin to the top and one pin to the bottom. These groups both have a container layout of column, so we can stack our logo and some navigation buttons and icons like so. Our main content area is a column, so I'll add a nav bar, and underneath I'll put a repeating group. Since it's a column, any additional content will continue to stack as we add it to the main content area. Now if we preview the page, we can see our sidebar and the content that was placed in the main area. An amazing benefit that comes with stretching the main content area is that we can tell the sidebar to collapse when hidden. I'll set a toggle action for this icon, and when we preview the page, the rest of the content area will now fill the screen. We can also conditionally hide the sidebar when the page gets too small, and the content area will fill here as well. Because of the new responsive controls, building layouts like this has never been easier. Make sure to mix and match container layouts, percents, and alignment options to really take full advantage of it. That's it for this quick tip. For more, be sure to check out Bubble Academy.